All right. <laughs> Greetings. And welcome to the first ever Preach Jesus 101 commissioning event. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Um, my name is Denise, which you probably already know that, which means devoted to God. That's what my name means. Um, and I'm so glad you guys have come to support um, family or friends or, or whoever you are to these people and uh, in this worthy endeavor that we're going to do today. So when we become born again, Jesus automatically commissions us to go into all the world and make disciples. And for the past eight weeks, we have been focusing on some of the points of the gospel and how to go. So the whole course is built on Romans 10, 14 and 15. Thank you, Nick, by the way. Without Nick, this would not be, I could not do this at all. So thank you, Nick. Yes. So we've been trying to memorize this. Each line we took two weeks to study. And um, it's just, it's, it was from the Lord for sure. So how shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? Just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. So our message is good. It's, isn't it great to have a good message? I mean, we, just, we have a good message. What if we had a bad one? It'd be terrible. We have a good message. And so uh, today, those who are being commissioned are making a conscious decision to go out into all the world and intentionally, purposefully, and officially preach the good news of Jesus. In every class, we start with worship and have recently begun to say the daily declaration together. So we're going to put that on the screen. We're going to say this together. Are you ready? We're going to say this together. Here we go. Lord, God of the universe, Jesus, you have anointed me to preach the good news. You have given me the tongue of disciples. You have awakened my ear to listen as a disciple. I open my mouth wide and ask you to fill it today. You are with my mouth, so I cannot fail. You teach me what to say. I am not ashamed, afraid, insecure, or intimidated by anyone or anything because I know whose I am. I am a child of the one true God, and I have the right to be called by your name. You have not given me a spirit of fear or timidity or insecurity. You have given me a spirit of love, power, and a sound and disciplined mind. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. My testimony overcomes the devil. I am loved by God. And because of that, I am filled with courage, and I'm as bold as a lion. I have the mind of Christ. I have eyes to see, ears to hear, and a mouth to declare all of the goodness of God. You have given me this message of life to share with every creature, and I will preach Jesus today. All right, so here's how our time together is going to go today. Uh, each person who is being commissioned... We'll have a two-minute talk, and I say talk because it's not all about, it's not always going to be about their, their testimony from darkness to light, though it will involve that. Uh, so each person's going to do that for two minutes, and then we'll um, ask our resident apostles, Diane and Scott, to come up and pray for them and commission them. And we're going to end with a song and a prayer, and then we'll head over to the Keystone just as fast as we can for fellowship. And uh, with that, let's pray, and we'll get started. Father, thank you so much. Thank you for your presence that's already here because we're here and you live in us. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you for, the, for your presence. There's nothing, there's nothing better than that. And there's no place I'd rather be than in the presence of God. So we praise you, Jesus. We thank you that even through these testimonies, this, this building, this room is going to be saturated with your presence. And so what comes next will be, will be amazing truly amazing uh, display of life, new life. And so, Lord, we thank you and praise you for what you're going to do today. And we, we submit to you, we yield to you. We say, yes, Lord, whatever you have, whatever you want. Thank you, Lord, that our testimonies, through our testimonies, we do overcome the devil. We do overcome fear, and we don't have that, Lord. You didn't give us that. So if we have it, it's not from you. So, Lord, we don't want it anymore, so we give it all up to you. And we thank you and praise you. And we commit this time to you in Jesus' name. And before we start with the testimonies, I just want to say, um, uh, for what it's worth, <laughs> I don't know how much it's worth, but I'm really proud of each one of you. Um, 
God knows that you've invested a lot. And in a different way too, because this is brand new to all of us, because no, this has never been this has never been before in this way. And so as as you listen to the testimonies um, of each one of God's power in a life surrendered to him, know that there are true stories of people who have found real life in Jesus. And so let's welcome Alex to start us off. My name is Alex. Uh, my name means the defender of humankind. And before I gave my life to Christ, I was a very mean person. I drank a lot of alcohol. I didn't listen to my parents. I would get in arguments with my other family. And when I surrendered my life to Christ, I quit drinking. I started going to church more. And I just became a lot happier. My name is Shirley, and um, it means song, poem, or, uh, or, or, okay, song or poem. And before I came to Jesus, I was lost. But in 1970, I started seeing him. And I have a poem that I want to say. It's on the cross of Calvary. And I, I wrote this March 25th, 1970. With deaf ears and blinded eyes, I didn't care enough to see that many years ago you gave your life upon the tree. You said, Father, please forgive her, for she knows not what to do. I'd gladly give my life for her, for the, that's the only thing I can do. I'll die on the cross of Calvary. But still I did everything for Satan. I didn't care enough for, for you. I did everything for Satan. I didn't think I needed you. I didn't want to hear about you or what you had to be told. I didn't need to read my Bible, for my heart it was so cold. Then one day you whispered, O oh child, so lost in sin, open up your heart, my child, and let me come in. Walk away from ch Satan, child, and let me, uh, let me take your hand. For can't you see this, the blood and the st nails, <laughs> the nail scars in my hand? Yes, I'm the one who died to take away your sin. Oh, please, my precious child, won't you let me come in? It is, it's just because that I love you that I said, Father, please forgive her, for she knows not what to do. I'd gladly give my life for her. That's the best that I can do. I'll die for her on the cross of Calvary. Then... My Savior was nailed to the cross just to take away my sins. He had died for you and died for me. He had to die. He died on the cross, on the cross of Calvary. Hi, my name is Lisa, which means consecrated to God. Um, I first started out in life as a very selfish, self-centered little girl. Um, when I was seven, my older cousin told me, you know, if you don't ask Jesus to come in your heart and ask him to forgive you for your sins, you're going to go to hell. And so I did. And God planted a seed of faith in my heart that day. Um, shortly after that, my parents divorced. My alcoholic father went one way and my mother um, became a bartender and spent her time in the bar. And so in the absence of my parents, my home soon became filled with a lot of darkness. Um, 
um, alcohol, drugs, sexual perversion. Um, and I was in a lot of uh, fears and phobias and anxiety for the next nine, 10 years of my life. Um, and my, my thoughts and my heart kind of became scattered. I, be, um, I guess they'd call it schizophrenia nowadays, just like a mild form. Um, but the Lord didn't forget about me. And when the time was right, he sent people in my life to water that seed of faith. Um, they loved me, showed me God's love, and shared his words with me. And um, soon I committed my life to Christ and was baptized when I was 17. And as I began to learn God's word, um, um, I realized that, well, he had showed me that the, the better I know Jesus, the more I love him. The more I love him, the more I obey him. And the more I obeyed him, the more intimate my walk with him was. And I was strengthened in my emotions. And, and he, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Psalm 2710, my first favorite verse was, when my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. And another way of saying that was, and the Lord will gather me up. And that's what he did. He gathered all those broken pieces in my mind and in my heart, and he began to make me whole um, through his word. And now as I've been walking with him, I've, I've realized, like I said, the, the, the better I know him, the more I love him, the more I love him, the more I obey him. And then just like he says in John 14, sorry, um, he that had, Jesus says, he that has my commandments and keeps them, it is he that loves me. And he will be loved, I'm sorry, he that loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and will make myself known to him. Also, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home within him. And that is, that's what it's all about. And um, the more time I spend with the Lord, then uh, Psalm 63 comes true that says, um, his loving kindness is better than life. My name is Sherry. It means dearly beloved, darling. But as a child, I was never treated that way. In fact, it was the opposite. I accepted Christ first when I was five, but it was about when I was eight years old that I really understood what it all meant. Even though I was being abused, I still served Jesus. I loved him because I knew he was good, even though the people around me were bad. Today I have peace and joy, and God is healing me from the effects of the past. Yes, yes. If God can do that for me, he can do it for anyone. Yes. The, um, I have forgiven all of my abusers through the power of Jesus Christ. There's a lot more I could say, and one day I will give my full testimony. My name is Sherry. I stand before you today, dearly beloved by God, and for the first time in my life, I feel accepted by his people. My advice to you is to call out on Jesus. He will absolutely change you from the inside out. Thank you. Okay, today I'm doing what I absolutely don't like, and that's speaking in public. So, my name is Rita, and it means pearl or child of light jewel. So, I'm happy to be here today and to share my personal testimony and also to tell you a little bit about my brother. Um, I was raised in a Catholic home. My parents were strict Catholics, they were loving parents. We had a great upbringing. Uh, we went to church every Sunday, and I attended Catholic schools. I learned who God was, and I learned the Ten Commandments, and, and I learned right from wrong. So, But after graduating from college, I started working and questioning that there was something in my life that was missing. And at this point, I really didn't know what it was. And it wasn't until a friend of my husband's, his name was Kenny Udd, he was a Christian, and he started reading passages from the Bible, and I thought to myself, um, I went to Catholic school all my life, and 
when I graduated, I thought I knew everything I needed to know about God. So this was kind of a new revelation for me. So this made me further pursue um, reading the Bible. So I realized after I had read the Bible that um, I was seeking out, you know, I was in a religion. I realized that what God really wanted was was my heart. He wanted my personal relationship, and I had never given my heart to him. So as through the process, I asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins and to come into my heart and live his life through me. So over the course of time, now that I look back, um, I notice that my life has changed tremendously. God has given me a hope and a purpose of why I am here, and he also has given me eternal life. So I found out that that piece of puzzle that I was looking for was my joy, and now it was complete yeah. through a relationship with him, and that was the only way, the only thing. I guess the best way to describe it was like I had a hole in my heart, and when Jesus came in, he came into my heart, and it was like my, then it closed up. And so my whole, my heart was complete. That's the best way I saw it. And I also wanted to share the story of my oldest brother. His name was David. And um, he was a great brother growing up. We had a close relationship. But he didn't believe in God, and so this led him down the wrong path. And so my mother prayed for him for like 20 years. And finally, after 20 years, he did come to the Lord, completely delivered from both drinking and drugs. And he had a great life. He got married and had a child. But over the course of time, he went through a very stressful period in which he, instead of running to God, he ran away from God, and he started drinking again. And his liver then enlarged three times its normal size, and his kidneys couldn't filter out the toxins in his blood, so he needed to go on dialysis, but his blood pressure was too low to transfer him to another hospital. So at the age of 45, he died. I've seen firsthand growing up what drugs can do and drinking can do to a person and it just leads you down the wrong path. And so God is the only one that can deliver and change a life. And the thing about drugs is sometimes in drinking, some people just start out just because they want to try it. But the thing about drugs is it kind of sneaks up on you and you get addicted. So it's best not to even touch anything like that. So, And the Bible says that God is our ever-present help in times of trouble. So when our lives are going down the wrong course, he is there. He is there to help us, to heal us, to deliver us from the wrong path. All we have to do is just call upon him and believe on him, the Bible says, on our Lord and Savior, and you will be saved. God can set anyone free from drugs and alcohol, and he can give you a whole new life. Yeah. Psalm 1611 says, God will show me the path of life, and in your presence, Lord, is fullness of joy. At your right hands are pleasures forevermore. God is real. He is all we need. If you just ask, he will make himself known to you. So to then be God, so to God be the glory, great things he has done and continues to do in the lives of all of his believers. Kind of hard following these people. Some of this is pretty good stuff. My name is Damon. My name means to overpower, tame, subdue, and conquer the evil one. Matthew 10, verse 7 through 8. And as you go preaching, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestations of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy to discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but one in the same spirit works 
all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills. We're a group of people that have been called to do God's will. So I'm just going to pray for the group. I'll try not to cry. God, I just want to thank you for this morning, Lord. I want to thank you, Lord, for this church and the leadership. I thank you that we have a pastor that is hungry after you, Lord, and is willing and calling people to be obedient to their, their callings, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that you brought Denise into our lives, Lord, that she's been obedient in doing your will and your call, Lord. And I pray blessings upon her, and I just pray that you'd give her fresh ideas and that she'd have an anointing that she has never seen before, Father God. I pray that wherever she goes, that she'll be blessed, Father God. And Lord, I just lift up every one of these people that were in the class, Lord. And Lord, your word says that if we need of anything, Father, just to ask you, Lord. So right now, Lord, I lift up everyone, Lord. And I pray, God, that you'd anoint them with your power and your Holy Spirit, Lord, that what your word says will come forth, Father God. Lord, we have the Holy Spirit that lives and dwells in us, Lord, and where we go is holy ground. And the enemy must flee. And Lord, I pray that you would give these people boldness and wisdom. And when we open our mouths, Father, we're going to speak with authority and power, Lord. And that we will rebuke the enemy and we will heal the sick and we will raise the dead. And we will preach the gospel, Lord, to those that need to hear it, Lord. And we will encourage those that already know, Lord, but we'll continue to lift them up and guide them, Lord, and direct them in the ways that you've done for us, Lord. And I thank you for all those that have encouraged us through our lives, Father, to bring us to this moment, Lord. And when we walk out these doors, Lord, may we be preachers of the gospel and the doers of the word, Lord. And I pray blessings and power and anointing and all good things on all those, Lord, that have served you and have chosen to do your will, Lord. And I thank you, Father God, for this day. And I thank you for all these friends, Lord, and for all these testimonies, Lord. And all we got to do is we just got to say, Lord, save me. Forgive me of my sins, Lord. And I just thank you for this day and bless everyone in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Wow, thank you, Damon. I suddenly feel anointed. That was good. So my name is Tammy, and the meaning of my name is perfection. But the biblical meaning of my name is palm tree. I don't know why I'm crying. <laughs> Makes no sense. So Denise affectionately always called me the perfect palm tree. <laughs> I had to dig deeper into this biblical meaning because I never liked the classic meaning of my name. Found a lot of good stuff about palm trees in the Bible, but um, Psalm 92.12 says, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. And have you ever seen a palm tree in a storm? They have an incredible ability to bend, but not break. And um, that's what Jesus does for us when we invite him into our lives. So, um, I'm sorry, my testimony is a little bit different. I don't discount it as... Um, I, don't, I do not discount the need for God's saving grace in my life. I thought I was doing everything right. I mean, I was raised in a church. I raised my kids in a church. And we were all confirmed. I even taught Sunday school for 17 years. So, all good, right? Not true. In all honesty, I was a self-righteous, miserable sinner. I found my life in a mess, and I was very ugly inside. Then I met Jesus and felt his overwhelming love for the very first time right here in this church. And God put on my heart that I was meant for so much more. I'm sorry, I began longing to be closer and closer to him, not just to know about him, but to know him. I made the decision to get baptized and dedicate my life to following Jesus for the rest of my days on August 11th, 2019. That day was life-changing for me. I went under, 
and old me was washed away. And I came up with a new person, as a new person with a new purpose. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is continuing a work in me. I now know that I cannot be righteous. I can only be righteous through Christ and the sacrifice he made for us all. He paid our debt in full. So as a Christ follower, I now long to think, live, and be in his will and his word every day. No, I'm not perfect, and I never will be, because I'm only made of flesh. But I know whose I am. I am a child of God. I am a victorious palm tree. <laughs> Through Christ, who strengthens me daily. Life has never been so gratifying, even in the struggles. And I praise and thank the Lord for this walk with him. I have to start with the confession because last week I was totally prepared for this and I was feeling confident and I was ready. And then I was attacked by the enemy on Monday and I lost it. Um, I proved that I am still weak and um, fallen from grace. And it is a testament that I'm here today because normally I would have let that shame and guilt keep me from this and keep me feeling like I don't deserve to be here and I don't deserve to preach Jesus. He's too good for me and he, that's the blessing. That's the good thing about it. So um, I'm here to speak a poem about ignorance and grace. I've been doing a lot of becoming and becoming a lot of new things. And so in this way have been doing whatever the circumstance brings. My seeds I have sown so unwisely, great clouds covered me up in doubt. But my God who is king, what glory you bring, thy hand has at once cast these out. I've been thinking a lot about knowing and knowing what little I thought about all of the fruits I was growing, and whether I ought or not. Oh, those seeds I had sown so unwisely should come forth to bring me despair. But my God, through his love, and by his only Son, has granted the gift of repair. Yeah. My name is Erica Hamlin. I forgot to tell you that at the beginning. Um, and Erica, if you look it up on Google, it means soul or lonely ruler which is what I would be if, um, if I hadn't been baptized on, you know, February uh, 13th. Um, and my name now means Jesus is my soul ruler. My name is Jennifer, and it means graced by Yahweh and pure. So my story starts when I was born. My brother had chicken pox, and I couldn't come home from the hospital. I had to stay for two weeks, and so my mother and I did not bond. And uh, as a child, I was very frustrating, and um, in that case, I was hit because I was frustrating and made to feel that I wasn't worthy. And um, so I grew up going to church. My parents were churchgoers. Um, my childhood activities were based on the church, but actually having a relationship with God wasn't taught. So it was just Sundays. It wasn't in the home. Um, the Bible wasn't opened in our home, and so up until last year, I felt very alone and unworthy, even though I had a husband and a family, um, there was just something missing. So when the pandemic hit, that's when things started to get bad, and we didn't know where 
the money was going to come from to pay bills and live. And so, um, but I hate to say it, um, there was money for alcohol. So I felt like I couldn't live in that environment and um, I left and uh, didn't know if I was going to come back. And so my son Cal sent me a live stream of the service, um, a particular service where he prayed for me. And I felt that very strongly. In fact, I was in tears watching. <laughs> and so I decided to come the next Sunday and I brought my parents with me. And um, so after that, I started keep, I kept coming every Sunday, um, tried to, if I wasn't um, sick or something, I would come every Sunday. And then I signed up to teach Sunday school and I love children, and um, every day I'm just graced. Uh, I'm blessed, and I do things um, just for God. And I was baptized. Uh, Tammy and Denise baptized me in the river. And um, I, I'll find my uh, spot here. Uh, so um, ever since I've been baptized, I've experienced uh, compassion forgiveness, understanding, love, and I've found what brings joy. And it's not from material things. It's from God, because he's in here. <laughs> yes, and um, everything that I wanted to do in the past that wasn't of God is gone. I don't want to do that. I want to just do what pleases him. And um, it was December uh, one morning in December, about 1.30 in the morning, um, I was having anxiety about our home. Um, we didn't know what to do with it. And um, we were cleaning it out, getting it ready, um, just if we had renters or somebody that wanted to buy it. And um, I heard God speak to me in two words, go slow. And I felt immediate calm. Um, prayer is so powerful. Um, I was praying, what, what do we do? What should we do? And um, ever since then, he's blessed us with someone that uh, needed a place to live. And so we f also feel blessed. And um, God is good and um, embrace the struggle. <laughs> Ask and it will be given. Seek and you will find your true path with Jesus. I have a poem here. Um, Come my beloved child and just let me tenderly love you. Come to my waiting arms where you would feel serene, calm and so deeply safe. Here's a place the weary world cannot enter. In my arms is a peace that passes all understanding. For here I would surround you in stillness and gently wrap you in healing and heaven's holy grace. Sometimes this world can become such an unending distraction. You can begin to feel weary from so much that is going on. Come, my child, and rest in my arms where there is quiet, joy, and understanding. Here you can begin to feel deeply composed and centered. Here you would feel so much more whole, tranquil, and calm. Come to me, my child, when the chaotic world is spinning all around you. Come let me hold you in kindness, mercy, healing, and peace. Come nestle in my embrace where the flow of my calming love is completely endless. Here, my child, is the tranquility you so deeply desire and the respite that your heart so dearly and longingly seeks. And from John 14, 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid.
Hello, my name is Julie. The meaning of my name is youthful, beautiful, flower. And I don't always feel that this describes me, but that's okay because Jesus does. And that's what matters. I listen to Sirius XM 131 Family Talk, which is mostly preaching. And one day on one of my trips to Minneapolis, the um, preacher was preaching on Revelation and hell and the lake of fire. It was very disturbing because I know so many people that I love, acquaintances that I have, and people that I don't know that are headed there. And so I have been very convicted that I don't preach Jesus like I need to. And so that is one of my biggest prayers is that Jesus will continue to talk to me and to give me the words to say to my people, to say to strangers, anyone, he always tells us when to go. We just have to do it. So, that's what I need. I need to tell people what Jesus did for me. He came to this world as a baby. He lived a perfect life. And he took all of our sins to the cross with him so that we could be saved and be with him forever. He is molding me every single day. I have so far to go and he's with me every day he works on me and he's never ever going to be finished with me but I get so much he talks to me through messages on Facebook through the Bible through pastor art that I listen to every morning and he just um, is so patient with me and um, I'm so thankful and I love him so much for the patience and the kindness and the love and the mercy. Our grace is new every single morning. Every morning is a brand new start. So if I go to bed knowing I messed up when I start up in the morning, it's going to be a brand new day. And I just thank him so much for that. My name's Alvin. It means uh, precious friend, noble friend. I grew up going to church and gave my life to Christ when I was uh, at 13 years old. Um, those my age in church didn't want to be friends with me, so I found friends uh, at school, and they introduced me to drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, and many other things that I won't go into right now. Um, we all liked to party hardy and uh, had a great time smoking pot, drinking, throwing up, you know, great things like that, yeah. <laughs> um, but by the time I was in my 50s, I was married and divorced three times. My life was a wreck and I really didn't care uh, then I met a woman that told me that God cares. She got me to get back into church. Uh, I learned that God was for me, not against me. And he can give me a better and new life with him. Uh, I always knew about God and Jesus, but I never really knew them. I started to read and found out that uh, 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 who they really are. I found the best friend ever, Jesus. My king, my savior, my friend. He listens to me, he talks with me. He, he's always there for me. He will never leave me or forsake me. 
He died for my sins. He rose from the grave to give me eternal life. Now, now that I know who he is um, and what he's done for me, I want others to know what he can do for them if they will only let him. I want to begin by thanking everybody who spoke today. You guys are amazing. That was incredible. I was hoping by being the last person I could get all my tears out, but I don't know if that's necessarily going to happen. But you guys were incredible. I started crying as soon as I saw Tammy's face. I was like, no, no, not already. Um, so when I began, um, so for 49 years, I have lived my life in absolute darkness. I had my eyes closed and I was reaching out groping for anything and everything that I thought would help to make me happy, whole, and complete. And only after two years of traveling through the United States, one afternoon in the parking lot of a laundromat, when I spoke Jesus' name out loud for the first time in 30 years, did my eyes finally open. I finally could see clearly. And the only thing I needed to do was to hold out my hand and ask for Jesus' help. Once I did that, <clears throat> Everything in my life changed. Every prayer that I prayed came true. I prayed for a church that was filled with the Holy Spirit. I prayed for a pastor that could quickly become um, a part of his congregation. I prayed for things that I could do and be participate and be active in. And this church answered all those prayers. I've met so many people in this family of faith who has given me so much inspiration and encouragement. It is absolutely a miracle to see and be a part of this church. But then the enemy began attacking me very recently with Bo passing away, the challenges I was having at the house, personal issues, temptations. All of these things were happening at the exact same time because the enemy does not want us to succeed. The enemy does not want us to open our mouths and breathe life to the message that Christ has given to us, right? That is why it's so important and valuable for all of us, regardless of how scared we may be, regardless of how hard it is to open our mouth and say it in front of a group of people. We have to because that's how Christ wins and that's how the enemy loses. So when all of that was happening, I was really close and I had sent a text to Pastor Todd. I called my sister and I called a couple of other people whose opinions I really respect. I was contemplating leaving. I was under so much attack when Bo died and what was happening in my life, I said, this isn't it. This can't be what God has asked me to do. It's too hard. I'm not the right person for it. That's all the enemy. So as soon as I started praying and asking for the right answer, he said, listen to what I've told you from the beginning. Surround yourself with strong Christian people who are going to lift you up and make you believe that you can do it. Stop saying you can't. Start saying that you can today. Let's preach Jesus today. You're not the last one. <laughs> I wasn't going to do this today. And um, what, my name's Jan. means God is gracious. God has been gracious. And I sat here listening to everyone, and I'm thinking about what my name means. And um, when I first started this class, it was to learn how to be more bold in giving my testimony. So when I started the class, I had health issues going on. I was a caregiver for my husband. Then in one week, everything changed. And Brian got sick, and he died. But I thought about it, sitting here listening. My life has changed, but my testimony hasn't. My testimony is still the same. And in a nutshell, um, grew up in, in a church-going family, accepted Christ at Bible camp as a teenager, went far away from that in, after I left home, after high school. Drugs, alcohol, um, got married, 
widowed. After that, the drugs and alcohol continued along with promiscuous lifestyle. But then I met Brian. God drew us to him through circumstances over the years. He protected me. He, kept, he, he just protected me. He protected Brian and I both. And uh, I read The Late Great Planet Earth by Hal Lindsey and prayed the prayer at the back of that. And that was at the age of 29. And I'm now 74. And all these years, uh, I've been walking with the Lord each day. Sometimes there comes challenges. Each day, sometimes things go great. Sometimes the enemy tries to attack us. We all have the same battles that we're going through. But God is gracious. He will be with us. All we have to do is trust, stay close to him. I don't know what people do without him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, we're going to um, ask you guys to come back up here. We're going to move this, and we're going to move this, and we're going to line up up here. So the first one, Alex, would be this way, in order, please. Thank you. You can touch it. There you go. All right. If, yeah, if you want to. Can everybody take two steps forward? Because Diane and I need to walk behind you. Or off the, uh, there you go. Perfect. Or black. Okay. All right. So. So I'm just going to read uh, these verses from uh, Mark and Matthew. Jesus commissions, commissioned his disciples to go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone, Mark 16, 15. Furthermore, Jesus said, I have been given all authority in heaven and earth. Therefore, go make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey all the commands I've given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. So, today... With the authority of Christ King Jesus. These participants are being commissioned to go and preach Jesus.
so with the authority bestowed upon us. We commission you. We call in the boldness and compassion and the joy for you to be able to spread throughout this community. In the name of Jesus. So surely with the authority bestowed upon us, we commission you with boldness and joy and laughter to be spread throughout this community in the name of Jesus Christ. Lisa, with the authority bestowed upon us, we commission you today with boldness, love, joy, and laughter to be spread throughout this community. So I thank you for this daughter. And with the authority that has been bestowed upon us, we commission you. With incredible boldness, joy, and laughter to be able to transform this community. Yeah, it's an honor today. It's an honor today to commission you, Rita, in the name of beautiful name of Jesus, that you will go forth with boldness, with joy, in the Holy Spirit, in the love and faith of Jesus Christ, to preach his name everywhere that he invites you to go. We decree and declare that you will go forth you will open your mouth and people will have an encounter with the King of Heaven through you. Damon, it is an honor and a privilege to stand here with you today and to decree and declare that you are being commissioned to go out into this region with the boldness of Jesus with the joy of the Holy Spirit, with the love of the Father, that your mind, your heart, and your mouth are anointed to preach the good news to all creation and that every person will have a tangible encounter with the King of Heaven. Amen. Tammy, what an, what an honor to anoint you today with this essence of nard, that you be baptized in love. And we commission you to go out with powerful love, the boldness of Jesus, the joy of the Holy Spirit, and the favor of the Father. I thank you, Father, right now that every word that will come from Tammy will create encounters with the King of Heaven. And the harvest is coming in. Thank you, Jesus, for Tammy. stand with you. Yeah, we 
baptize you with a baptism of love, a baptism of the Holy Spirit. you will be filled from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet with heaven. And it is an honor to commission you today with your brothers and sisters to go out with boldness and love and joy in the Holy Spirit to partner with Jesus to lead them to his Father. You would declare favor over your journey and powerful encounters with Jesus through your life. I ask that all in the beautiful name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Spirit, come. So we stand before you to commission you. Bless her with boldness, her love and compassion for this community. And we thank you for what you're about to do to change this community. just stand with Jesus. We say be filled with his love. Be filled with the faith of Jesus today. And we commission you to go out to preach the good news and if necessary use words. Love. 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 And they will see him. Go make disciples, Julie. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey all the commands that Jesus has given us. And just know he is with you. So Alvin, my brother,
we commission you with the authority that has been bestowed upon us. Full of greatness and boldness. I ask the breaker anointing be bestowed upon you. And I thank him in advance for the changes that are going to come because of you in this community. Peter, I hear Jesus saying, thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me in the Northwoods. We're so glad you're here. So come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Pour yourself over your son right now. Fill him to the top of from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Fill him with your love, Father. I decree and declare that the love of the Father overflow in and through your life, and that everyone around you will be saturated with the love of the Father pouring out of you. And we commission you today to go out with the boldness of Holy Spirit, the joy of the Father, the love of Jesus Christ, to preach Jesus to every creature and to make disciples in all the earth. We decree and declare that your life is an encounter with Jesus. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for Jan. Thank you for grace. <laughs> thank you for boldness today. To stand with her brothers and sisters. And know that we all stand with you. But more importantly, Holy Spirit being poured over you today. Filling you with love. Filling you with love. Increase, increase, Holy Spirit. That everything you do and say be sanctified with love. And we commission you to go out with boldness, with love, and with the joy of the Holy Spirit carrying balloons and singing and dancing. <laughs> You're going to create a party, Jan. <laughs> so we are excited to see the children coming into the Father through your life because you are an encounter with his son, Jesus Christ. And we bless you in this journey to preach Jesus to all creation. I want to do one quick last thing. Just put your um, certificates just at your feet for a second, please. And everybody interlock your arms together. Everything that was spoken is, is for each and every one of you to receive. This is your family. And this is a chain never to be broken. This is an impenetrable force that's about to enter this community. And I thank you, God, for the change.
that's about to happen. So go get them. Today is a family of God, Cornerstone Church, along with the teachers, pastors, elders, and apostles. We commit to pray for all of you as you go into all the world and preach the good news. We are excited to partner with you as you are commissioned to go out and preach Jesus. We just have one more thing to do here, which is very important. This song is, uh, it's called The Commission. And uh, it's, it's Shirley's, incidentally, it's Shirley's favorite song of all time, I think. Well, not of all time, maybe, but <laughs> present time, present time. All right. So Nick's going to put the, the words up on the screen. We can all sing it together. And With the seal on it. You know how they, they sang a hymn and then they, they left you know, the garden. Jesus and the disciples sang a hymn and he left. So this is what this is. See my hands and look at my feet. It's okay if it's hard to believe. I have faith that you will do greater things. It's my time to go, but before I leave, go tell the world about me. Cause I was dead, but now I Don't forget the things that I taught you. I conquer death, but I hold the keys. And where I go, you will go to someday. There's much to do here before you leave.
And before we close in prayer, I just want to say one thing that immediately, and, and you know that immediately following this Preach Jesus event is a funeral, and he was only 55. And when he got up that morning, he had no idea that he wouldn't finish the day. And this is the very reason that we are going out to preach Jesus. It's urgent. We're at the end. Time is short, and we have the best news ever, that Jesus loves us, died for us, and wants to save us. So if you hear his voice calling today, please don't hesitate to answer him with, yes, Lord. And if you need any help with that, please ask one of us. We'd be glad to point you in that direction. We've been studying on it for a while, so we're pretty fresh on how to know how to do that. So I just want to say um, congrats to all those who uh, were sent out today. <laughs> thank you to Diane and Scott. Wow, thank you so much for coming in here and doing that. And um, we're going to head over to the Keystone. Um, and so, because the people are coming in for the funeral, so... We're going to head on to the Keystone to fellowship with one another. Please do that. Please come with us so we can, we can fellowship. And I'm just going to pray, and we'll, we'll go on, okay? So, Father, thank you so much. We ask you to seal this, yeah. everything that's happened here today, Lord, that you would seal it with your, with your spirit, Lord God. And that as we go, there will have been a shift for all of us here today. Yeah. Even as in the upper room, when you, when you came and there weren't there, all the disciples weren't there, but those who were there, you said, peace I give to you. And then you said, I'm sending you out. <laughs> I'm sending you out. And so, Lord, we praise you and we thank you and we give you all the glory, all the honor that's, that we can possibly give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. I want to thank you. Some of you I know are going to head out to the farm today at 1 o'clock. Um, for all those foster families from Gogivik and Ontonagon County, um, you know what the you were praying, Diane, here is about loving people. And that is the most important thing we can do is just love people. And um, Sandra told me something years ago. She said, thanks for loving my kids. And if you want to reach somebody, love their kids. That's what matters. And so I thank you for doing that. We, I, I won't be able to be there and Denise and others, but, but thank you for those of you that are going to go out there. So.